Dear students, I am Dr. Aruna Mohan from Delhi University and in this session we will discuss about central nervous system in some detail. We know the central nervous system has brain and the spinal cord and brain being the most important organ has so many areas which are controlling and regulating functioning of different organs in the body. We have heard about cerebral cortex which is involved with memory in our brain. We also know hypothalamus to which is attached our pituitary gland. We have learned in previous sessions that hypothalamus has very strong control on pituitary gland and pituitary cannot function without hypothalamic control. Hypothalamus has many other functions to do also. Cerebellum is there brain stem is there which continues as a spinal cord and the point which I would like to tell you children is that in brain the outer area is gray matter and central area is white matter whereas it is just the opposite in a spinal cord where you have gray matter in the center surrounded by white matter. Gray matter is formed by cellular part, the cytoplasmic part of the cell and white matter is formed by axonal part. So you can understand the location of nerve cell in different areas. In brain, gray matter is towards the outside, so main body of the nerve cell is there and axon is going centrally and that is why the central area is white or white matter. In the spinal cord, the nerve cell body is in the center making gray matter and the axon is coming towards the outside of the spinal cord which we call white matter. In short, the arrangement of gray matter and white matter is just the opposite in brain and the spinal cord. Peripheral neural system comprises all nerves of the body associated with central nervous system. That will mean all the nerves which are supplied to cells, to organs, to organ systems, they are finally connected to central nervous system through peripheral neural system. So peripheral neural system is doing a great job by connecting each and every cell of the body to central nervous system through nerve fibers of PNS, peripheral neural system. Now these nerve fibers which belong to PNS are of two types, afferent fibers and efferent fibers. Afferent fiber will take the message to the cell or the organ and efferent will bring back the message. Both the messages are important and that is how the PNS will work in coordination. PNS or peripheral nervous system has two major divisions the somatic neural system and autonomic neural system. Somatic neural system as the word indicates somatic the cell in the skin or a distant cell that is connected to main nervous system through PNS and hence it will take the root of a spinal cord. Another is autonomic neural system. Now somatic neural system, how it works? You can see the spinal cord. You can see the central gray area surrounded by white area. You can also see the afferent root and the efferent root. Suppose accidentally you prick your finger with a needle. Now this message will go to a spinal cord through sensory neuron or sensory nerve cell. So definitely the dendrite of this nerve cell was in your finger and axon is running towards spinal cord and other thing it cannot be one neuron running from your finger up to your spinal cord there should be chain of nerve cells connected from axon to dendrite 
again acts on to dendrite and finally it reaches the spinal cord. So which end of nerve cell is reaching the spinal cord? Definitely it should be axon. This was the sensory nerve which started from your finger ended on to spinal cord. A spinal cord got the message and will give the reply through motor nerve. And motor nerve will take the message to finger that remove the finger from that point where it is pricked. Now how this message will come? The axon which had ended on the spinal cord will make synapse with another nerve cell which is now a part of motor nerve and similarly there will be link on the backward direction dendrite to axon again dendrite to axon and finally in case of motor nerve what will reach your finger will be an axon. I am sure children you have understood this circle. The sensory nerve begins from your finger from dendrite it reaches spinal cord and finally it is axon which is reaching the spinal cord and it is giving message to the nerve cell which is belonging to motor nerve and now in case of motor nerve again dendrite axon connections and the one which is reaching your finger should be axon. The sensory nerve has taken message to spinal cord that finger is pricked it should be removed and motor nerve from spinal cord which is running up to finger will give the message remove the finger from the point where it is getting hurt. I have taken some time in explaining this to you but in our body it happens in fraction of second. The moment you are hurt you withdraw your finger that means in that fraction of second the sensory nerve has taken the message and motor nerve has brought back the message that remove it. Imagine if this system was not there, what would have happened to our body? Suppose hand touches some hot object, then it should be removed immediately otherwise our hand will burn and hence this system has to be very very fast and it has to work in fraction of seconds and that is why we have the spinal cord because message reaching to brain may take some time and spinal cord is meant for reflexes and and that is why the reflex action will take place through spinal cord. So this becomes part of somatic neural system. Somatic means the cell in the skin where each and every part of our skin the cells are taken care of by this part of PNS the somatic neural system. Coming to autonomic neural system which is again very important. The autonomic neural system or ANS it transmits impulses from CNS to involuntary organs and smooth muscles of the body whereas somatic neural system was relaying impulses from CNS to skeletal muscles. Children you can understand and appreciate the difference between the two now. The somatic neural system is relaying impulses from CNS to skeletal muscles hence controlling your reflexes. What are skeletal muscles which are connected to your skeleton and reflexes always will involve the bones and the muscles. In autonomic neural system it will transmit impulses from CNS to involuntary organs. The organs which are functioning automatically you are not controlling their function and also smooth muscles of the body. So what organs may come in this category like beating of the heart, functioning of liver, functioning of endocrine glands or smooth muscles like uterine endometrium all these functioning are controlled by autonomic neural system. You can understand uh, children it becomes important to control different areas of our body in different ways. In some areas you need immediate reflex, in some areas you have little time and you need action to be permanent and regular because you are not controlling those areas 
on your own. So somatic neural system is important, but autonomic neural system is also equally important. ANS, the autonomic neural system has two divisions, sympathetic neural system and parasympathetic neural system. Now we shall understand how these two divisions of ANS work in coordination. Let me start with one example. Suppose you close your eyes. Then suppose sympathetic neural system is involved. Now you have to open your eyes also. If you have closed it, you have to open it also. Now for that parasympathetic neural system will be involved. So for functioning of different organs, there is one way to function, one way to come back to normal. And that is how both the systems are important. One will initiate the action, other will close the action. Suppose I am trying to hear something or I am trying to write something with my fingers, with my hand, then I will stop also. I won't go on writing. Suppose I am drinking water, I am drinking and then I will stop drinking. So both will be controlled by neural mechanism. So sympathetic and parasympathetic, they have to go hand in hand, otherwise our body cannot work normally. It is like car you have to drive forward also and sometimes you have to apply back gear also and without both the gears or both the movements, you cannot handle your vehicle. So our body is also a vehicle where we have to control each organ in forward or in backward direction or in functional and non-functional situation and hence we should have both the mechanisms operating in our body. So in sympathetic and parasympathetic, if we take whole body as a machine, whole body as a system, then for every small thing there is sympathetic branch, the nerve branch and there is parasympathetic branch. If it is an endocrine gland, it will be secreting hormone. So sympathetic will be functioning and then when it is not secreting hormone, that means parasympathetic is working. If it is exocrine gland, which is secreting say some enzymes in your alimentary canal, enzymes should be secreted only when there is food in the alimentary canal and not 24 hours. So again, these two systems will take care when enzyme is secreted and when it should not be secreted. So these two systems balance the functioning of each and every organ, gland or cell in our body and which also becomes very important. So children, in this session we have discussed about central nervous system, brain and the spinal cord and also the peripheral nervous system including ANS which includes sympathetic and parasympathetic neural system. With this, we come to the end of this session. Thank you.